Hey y'all, N4H and H here. Uh, uh, my brother up at the uh, RV camp in North Georgia. With his uh, buzzard one antenna homebrew thing, he calls it a buzzard one. And it's not really supposed to operate on 80 meters, but the antenna tuner made the radio happy and listen. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of footage of this. This is pretty amazing. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm running, I am running the amplifier, so that's helping out on, uh, probably, but uh, you're coming in, that's, that's incredible for, uh, for uh, you know, me having it on IPO too. I'm, when you come back, I'm gonna put it on amp one and get a, an actual uh, S meter reading. He's sometimes bouncing over ten over. Fifteen. Okay, back to IPO two. That gives the best signal to noise ratio. You were peaking fifteen over nine on that last transmission. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that thing that that buzzard one's turning out to be a, a gangbusters, even as what would you call a compromise antenna since it's thirty two feet long. But man, it's just it's just killing it. Um, we should have maybe tried that this afternoon just to see if it would have worked. But you know, at night this band's going to go long. Um, but yeah, you're coming in great. Let's see, it's uh, after dark. It's 646 right now. What, what's the temperature? Well, it's currently 43 here. Um, we watched, Nancy and I watched uh, Ryan Hall, y'all, and uh, looks like it might, the worst of it might go above us. Yeah, the snow and the, the extreme stuff is going to be... We got bad weather coming in. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, so uh, the 891, how, how, have you made any more contacts with it today? I mean, I guess, well, that's what you're on now, I mean, but uh, have you tried any other bands, uh, made any longer distance contacts? No, I figured I thought today, I thought I need a little bit on the phone and got some TV and laid down pictures of the short map. Yeah, I think I got it on Well, that's, uh, that's your prerogative during a uh, sabbatical, right? Yeah, I actually did some, some housework. I washed dishes. <laughs> we got a little QR Mary uh, from somewhere up or down the band. Uh, I'm going to see if I can knock that out on uh, your next transmission. Okay, I'm going to width. Yeah. 1.8. Okay. That's all it took. Now I could also leave it at 2.25. Go negative with the shift. 
at the end of the pressure control. Yeah. And I had to chip ice out of the way to do the screw back on. 1.95. I've got water from, you know, 7 8 o'clock in the morning. Shift to it to negative 220. I'm sorry, I was explaining one little thing. What was that last part? Yeah, they've got the, the freeze warning in effect here. So at, by 10 o'clock at night, you have to have your water hose disconnected. And this morning when I went out, a little bit of water had run out the end of it and frozen, and I had to chip the ice off of it before I could put it back on the process. Oh, man. That's right. I forgot about that rule. Um, but you... You got enough water you bring on board, right? Yeah, when I first got here, the water was turned off for the whole park. Uh, they had a main break. Okay, I'm going to turn off shift. Uh, in one of those pictures I sent you today, you can see the little tractor sitting there. That's where it broke. They got it fixed. Uh, by the time I got here, they had it repaired. Okay, went 1.95. No they shift. Kind of the water on. First thing I did was fill my potable tank for overnight. Oops, a little bitty. Stay at 1.8. Roger that, yep. And uh, so did you end up having to use any gas heat last night, or did you just run on electric? Uh, I ran the gas for a little while, and I turned it off. Because it actually was cooling it out, and it was comfortable enough to, to sleep. And okay. then I thought about it. The gas 1.8 went... Shifted 80, you know, negative 80. So I turned it back on and pushed it down as low as it'll go. It kept it about 66 degrees in here. You've been in here. There's 15 different blankets in this place. Roger that. Well, that's good. That's good. Yeah, it's amazing to me that the temperature up there in the elevations isn't much colder than it is here. It got to 28 for a low uh, and that was early this morning, I think around 4, 4.30 uh, was our lowest point. But, uh, man, th th he was talking about some of the gusts I was watching on the weather report. He was talking about some of the gusts might hit 60. Yeah, up in that area where the gusts are at, Oh, you guys know that's the FTDX 5000, the big behemoth. But the techniques I show you here apply to just any other YAC radio and, for that matter, most radios. You see here, hear more of that interference coming in now. Of course, the, the noise level, that's typical for this band. That's why IPO is your friend, and I'm running IPO2, which is uh, an additional level of intercept point optimization that this radio has. Yeah, don't, uh, don't chance it. Play it, uh, play it on the safe side. It's just not... Man, I mean, I couldn't imagine trying to pull that trailer with, with ice, or even snow for that matter. So you see, the IPO improves what's called cross-modulation uh, characteristic of the receiver. That'll help with that interference. Okay, well, that's, that's all I wanted you to see in this video. I just, you know, we... We had a QSO earlier today. Uh, standby one in 4 H and H. We had a QSO earlier today with that buzzard one antenna. That's that a vertical that he made. It's a home brew, and uh, it's featured in the previous video. Um, that um, that I uh, let's see uh, that video will have gone public on Friday, December twenty third. 
anyway, that video, we were on 60 meters. Now, the, an the antennas, uh, it's vertical wire using a 32-foot telescopic mast, 32 feet of wire coming down to an unin, and then the uh, he's got 15 feet of coax. It uses the coax shield as a, as a uh, counterpoise, similar to how an in-fed half-wave works. Um, but so, for example, at 40 meters, the antenna is really only a quarter wave tall. He's got an FT891 from Yesu and an MFJ939 antenna tuner, auto tuner, which can match up to a 30 to one, 32 to 1 SWR mix. That's fooling the radio, and look how efficient it is even here on. He's 15 over 9 with 100 watts from uh, North Georgia. It's about 63, 64 miles away. So uh, it's kind of really kind of working out nice for an RV antenna, though it's a compromise antenna. I mean, here on this band, that's only about a, that's about an eighth of a wavelength antenna. And again, the antenna tuner is keeping the radio happy, acting as a transformer. Well, I hope you found the video helpful and informative. Thank you so much for uh, watching the video. I'd appreciate it if you click the like and help us out with YouTube's search algorithm. Uh, consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, be sure to click that notification bell and you'll be notified each time I upload a video, usually two a week, sometimes more if I've got something important to share. And um, also too, I have to shout out to the Patreon support team who make these videos possible. Without their uh, financial assistance each month, I wouldn't be able to afford to continue this. Uh, their support helps offset the cost of, of this channel and helps ensure that it'll uh, be around longer and longer. So uh, if you want to join that team, there are some perks for the executive and VIP level. Uh, please consider doing that. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. That's patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. And finally, if you would, uh, please share a link to this video on social media, text message, email, or phone a friend. Hey, thanks for watching and 73 from N4HNH.